My name is Hyojin Lee, and today I will be discussing how I predicted new gene functions and new protein-protein interactions. I began with two types of data. The first type of data came from three different sources. The first of the sources is ARCHES4, which is a database made by Alex Lachman of the Mayan Lab. He processed over 130,000 samples of RNA-seq data from both human and mouse from the Gene Expression Omnibus, which is a publicly available resource. The other two co-expression data sets came from the GTEx portal, a database of RNA-seq data from tissue donors, and the Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia. From these three sources, I received co-expression data sets, or matrices of RNA-seq data. The other type of data that I began with was the GMT file. This comes in a very specific format, and I will refer to GMT files interchangeably as libraries or GMT files. Each row or line holds one gene set. It begins with the name of the gene set, such as a phenotype or transcription factor. I will refer to these gene set names interchangeably as gene sets or gene functions. It is followed by the genes in the set, separated by tabs. This format is appropriate for further benchmarking with enrichment analysis methods. So I began with the co-expression data set. As you can see, the genes are on the rows and the samples are on the columns. I then normalized this expression matrix using quantile normalization. And I found the correlation between all the genes in the co-expression data set and all the genes in the library of interest. I then found the average correlation by set. This involved, for example, if the first set had three genes, then I would take from the correlation matrix those three columns and average them across the rows. In doing so, I filled every cell of the average correlation by set matrix with an average, average of the correlations between that respective gene in the row and all the genes in the set. I then created new GMT files in order to predict overall the gene, new gene functions. I ranked the average correlations, and then I either took the top n genes, where n is the number of genes in the set in the original library, or I did a z-score transformation on the ranked average correlations and used a z-score cutoff. We can measure the performance of this method with a raw curve. Accuracy is indicated by area greater than 0.5. This is because some of the genes were already associated with some functions. So when these functions, along with newly predicted functions, are highly ranked, at the beginning of the average correlations, they create an area greater than 0.5, indicating a high performance. So we perform this rock curve area under the curve test for each gene. In these plots, you can see the result of performing the area under the curve performance test. With the, area, with the average area under the curve being shown in the following violin plots. ARCHES4 co-expression data outperforms both CCLE and GTEx datasets in this comparison of eight libraries with four datasets. Within the ARCHES4 co-expression datasets, the mouse data outperform the human data. You can see that the libraries of Go Biological Process and KEG are performing exceptionally well, with the ARCHES4 mouse data having a median area under the curve that is very close to 1.0. This is an example of a new GMT that I created. You can see here that the genes on, in the new column in black, such as DNTT or MYB, now are associated newly with the function of abnormality of B cell number. This is a newly predicted function for those genes. What can we do with this? Well, the NIH's Illuminating the Druggable Genome program has a list of kinases, ion channel, and G protein coupled receptor proteins that are of particular interest because of their susceptibility to drugs and their association with human disease. 
One of these kinases, ADCK2, is currently on many databases with its function being unclear. The new functions that I predicted using this method suggest that ADCK2 may have an unappreciated role in breast cancer. In this vein, we can use this method to predict new functions for these proteins of interest and hopefully make progress in associating drugs with certain diseases. We can also use this method to predict new protein-protein interactions. I use data from three libraries, three networks of protein-protein interactions, in order to do these new predictions. The first was Biogrid, a database of protein-protein interactions, which I will refer to as PPIs. The second is Bioplex, which took from the GIGI lab at Harvard. The Bioplex network took roughly 2,600 protein targets, or baits, and use mass spectrometry to find prey proteins that are interacting with these baits. They also used an algorithm to narrow and verify these interactions. The final network that I used involved integrating three different protein interaction sets and was created by the Marcot lab. One of these three sets that they used was the Bioplex that I mentioned. The HUMAP network also used a new algorithm to find prey-prey interactions in addition to bait-prey interactions. The three sets they integrated all used mass spectrometry. In order to predict protein-protein interactions, I began with the original paired form that you see at the top left. Each row signifies a pair of protein-protein interactions. I converted this into the GMT format file that you saw earlier and use the same method to predict a new GMT format file of protein-protein interactions. Then I converted this back into the paired form and compared the original and new paired forms. When I measured the performance of these three libraries, we can see that HUMAP outperformed both the BioGrid and BioPlex networks. The performance of all three above 0.5 indicates that we can now say that protein-protein interactions are more correlated with co-expression data sets. We may conclude that we can use RNA-seq data, co-expression matrices, to effectively predict gene, product, gene function and protein-protein interactions. We can also say that the ARCHOS-4 co-expression data was more predictive than GTEx and CCLE, we hope that these predictions may someday change some patient's life for the better. Thank you to the Mayan Lab, and thank you for listening.